Edwin Frizzell is currently the Regional Vice President, Acork Central Canada, and the General Manager of Toronto's landmark, Fairmont Royal York. Appointed to the role in 2014, okay. Frizzell oversees more than 1,300 employees and leads the iconic hotel's vision and next chapter following the property's most extensive transformation in its 90-year history. Now part of the world-leading hospitality group, Acor Fairmont Royal York boasts 1,329 guest rooms and suites and remains the largest Fairmont property in North America. Additionally, as Regional Vice President for Acor Central Canada, Frizzell also leads the teams at other notable properties in Central Canada region, including Fairmont Chateau Laurier, Novotel Ottawa, Novotel Toronto Centre, Novotel North York, Novotel Vaughan, Fairmont Winnipeg, Fairmont Hotel McDonald, Fairmont Palliser, and the Sheraton Suites Calgary EAO Claire, a Fairmont managed hotel. Frizzell's career in hospitality began at a young age with his first job as a, fir as a front desk agent at the Rod Royalty Inn in his hometown of Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. He has since worked in many distinguished hotels over the course of more than 20 years, holding leadership roles at the Delta Chelsea Toronto, the Sutton Palace Hotel, the Sheraton Centre Toronto, and general manager positions at the W City Centre Hotel in Chicago, the Hilton Toronto, and prior to Fairmont Royal York, the Weston Harbour Castle Toronto. Frizzell is a seasoned veteran in the luxury hospitality business and brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to his leadership. He holds a Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management from Mount St. Vincent University and was the program's first graduate in 1990, where he was... where he was also awarded the Governor General's Medal for the highest aggregate average among his peers. Residing in the heart of Toronto, Frizzell has, is passionate about travel, design, workplace culture, and guest experience. As the incoming chairman of the board of the Greater Toronto Hotel Association, Frizzell has a long history of industry involvement in Toronto, serving as the GTHA board and executive member since 2009, and currently as a member on the board of directors for Tourism Toronto. As an, as an expert in his field and trusted leader to nearly 3,000 colleagues across Canada, his commitment to his teams and growing vision for his properties also earned him the coveted 2019 Pinnacle Award for Hotelier of the Year. On behalf of Mount St. Vincent University, it gives us great pleasure to welcome Mr. Edwin Frizzell to the stage. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So you've all got lots of food in your bellies. Mary, you got to speak to them before they got food. Now I get to deal with it afterwards, but it's all good. It's all good. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for giving me some time with you. Uh, Sandy said when we were chatting earlier today, she said, you're going to have tons of time, don't worry. And then she told me we we're going to start at 640 and we'd be done by now. So thank you very much. It's been nice seeing you all. Well, in, in truth, uh, I'm actually really excited to be here today. I'm, I'm excited to be here for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, it is really amazing to be back in this school. Uh, for those of you who were doing math earlier about the fact that I graduated in 1990, please don't do that. Because uh, for me, that feels like it was a couple of years ago. And you know, all the faculty that I spent time with all look exactly the same, as do I. Uh, but it is really amazing to be here and see how uh, incredible the campus looks uh, and what a great sort of progress you've all made in terms of tourism and hospitality support across Canada. But when I was coming with you tonight to sort of talk about what would, might be relevant to those of you who attended the conference today, uh, Candace and Sandy and I talked about a few things, but what's really been on our mind lately, particularly at Fairmont and in Accor, which of course we're now part of as a, as a global organization, really is the idea of branding. And, and I thought it would be kind of uh, interesting for the students to talk a little bit about how our brand has evolved over the last couple of years, particularly as a case study with Fairmont Royal York, which has been through an incredible transformation. Uh, but the reason why that's incredible is I actually couldn't have done this job in the last five years if it hadn't been for the things that I learned here in this school. So if you needed a reason to believe that what you're doing now and all that hard work and the hours that you spend in class and working in groups, spending time understanding, you know, lots of concepts around accounting and design and organizational behavior and go, gosh, will I ever use this in real life? 
trust me when I tell you, every single day I use those skills, and I couldn't be more proud to be a graduate and an alumni of this school, and thank you to you all for that. So let me tell you a little story. I think it's actually kind of important when you listen to somebody speak to you for a few minutes to understand why you should. And thank you both for that lovely long-winded bio. I will apologize on behalf of my marketing team and we'll shorten that for future. Uh, I have a very large title. It just means that I have lots of opportunity to spend time with great people. And truly that is what leadership is all about. And for those of you who've chosen hospitality, I know we have a mixed group tonight, business and, and accounting and, and lots of other functions, but particularly for those of you in the hospitality space, you've chosen an industry that is about you being of service to other people. Uh, and whether that is taking care of guests, uh, which you will learn to do and are learning to do through your practical experience, it is actually as you grow in your leadership role, really more about how you take care of the people who ultimately you will rely on to execute all of the visions that you have in terms of your success in business. Uh, and so tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And of course, that's a, a view of the Royal York. You've heard the bio. We're going to move on from that. Goodness gracious. Got to get marketing to work on that. So why? Did I become a hotelier? I've been asked that question a few times today. I, I, I actually did grow up on Prince Edward Island. I am an East Coaster by, uh, by uh, birth. Uh, so I'm not from away, just in case you were wondering. Uh, although I do live in Toronto, so I, again, will apologize for that in advance, because I know oftentimes it's about you know, maritime supporting maritime uh, environments. But I think we can be all Canadian today. But I actually grew up in the late 70s and early 80s, and when we didn't have iPhones, we didn't have the internet, we had to rely on other things to entertain us, and I relied on television, much like my counterparts. But while many of them were watching, you know, trying to figure out who shot JR, or <laughs> dating myself, right? Or, or why Alexis and Crystal ended up in the swimming pool in ball gowns, which I didn't understand either. These you can Google, millennials, figure it out, Dynasty Dallas, it's all good. I was watching this cool show called Hotel. Now, why is that important? Well, Connie Selica was really pretty, <laughs> and she was. Uh, and James Brolin looked really important, and he was the general manager of the hotel. And I got taken away by this really cool place that seemed glamorous and interesting. And as a young kid growing up on Prince Edward Island, I thought, wow, someday I'd like to be part of some really cool place like that. And of course, my parents were in the business of hospitality. My family ran the general store in a rural community on Prince Edward Island. And so this idea of service to other people was very natural. I can still hear my mother rapping in my head saying, speak before you're spoken to. Every customer that walks in the store, say hello. Get to know who your customer is. They're going to need to take care of you. And I watched over the years as my parents took care of the community, you know, held, held bills of debt for a couple of extra weeks because somebody couldn't pay that month and had to pay the mortgage versus their grocery bill. Uh, and really, this idea of taking care of other people was embedded from, a, uh, from an early age. But what I didn't know at the time is that, in fact, this lovely hotel show called, or TV show called Hotel was based on a book called Hotel. It's actually a picture of the original book, which I'm fortunate to have today. And what I didn't know at the time, before I came to this school in the late 80s, was that in fact Arthur Haley wrote that book while he was living in this hotel in Toronto called the Royal York. So funnily enough, the very reason that I'm a hotelier is in fact due to the fact that of the hotel that I actually now get to run today. So if you ever need a reason to think about what fate's all about, uh, sometimes the universe just decides who and where you should go, and I'm really glad that the universe picked me. After I graduated from here in 1990, I got a call one late one night from uh, the folks at Walt Disney World. This was the first time Disney actually came recruiting here on the East Coast. They only ever went to Toronto before. Uh, I had been offered a full-time job at the Hilton here in, in Halifax, now the Westin, but uh, back then it was the Hilton Halifax. And uh, I'd already accepted a full-time job. And at 10 o'clock one night, the phone rang weirdly, and I answered the phone, and they're like, hello, this is the Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. You've been selected to be part of the Canadian Ambassador Program. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've just like started a full-time job with this company here in Halifax. And I'm like, great, I'll be there tomorrow! <laughs> and I did, and I still have those ears, and it was an amazing experience. So if, in fact, Disney's still recruiting, and if you have interest in going and doing something really fun, I highly encourage you to, uh, to check it out. It was a great experience. But what Disney taught me was this idea of people being important. Right? You can design, build, and create the most beautiful places in the world, but it takes people to make those dreams a reality. And I can tell you, as the leader of almost 4,000 people today, uh, if we don't take care of our people, you got nothing. It's just nothing's going to happen. 
So how does that all sort of translate into branding? So here we are. Many of you, you don't have Fairmont here in Halifax yet. Uh, maybe we'll have one. I don't know. Uh, a course growing. We're one of the biggest uh, hotel companies in the world. Uh, before Marriott bought Starwood, not for not. This is not a brand like mine's bigger than yours thing. Uh, but but before Marriott acquired uh, Starwood and became one of the large the largest uh, hotel company in the world today, Accor, which Fairmont's now part of, was in fact the largest hotel company. And with almost 5,000 hotels around the world, it's just nice to know that you're part of something that's big and global. And so there you can see the Fairmont. Uh, network. It's a big company and we're really excited. But in fact, Fairmont, for us in Canada, means something very different. Uh, in a core, I can't even keep track of this, I'm not going to lie. Uh, our CEO, Sebastian Bazan, buys companies like he buys uh, chewing gum, I think. Uh, and so today, there's over 39 brands in the portfolio. And as a global company, that's really exciting because for those of you who are entering the workforce, it basically means if you're interested in working somewhere in the world and doing anything, uh, we've probably got a hotel, location, place, brand that fits your desires. So Accor.com, you're going to be hearing a lot more about that in the coming weeks because we are launching this entirely new lifestyle um, uh, loyalty program called All, a core live limitless, which will really transform the way that we do uh, business in terms of uh, the global footprint. But let's talk about Fairmont, and there's a great picture of the Royal York in Toronto. I live just around the corner from that building that looks like a knife, uh, so I get to walk to work every day. Funnily enough, I don't actually get to walk to work like that. Although apparently that's how my marketing team feels, like everybody in Toronto does, just have for a stroll with our shopping bags. It's great. But our brand messaging around Fairmont and why I'm talking about the brand today is because this is a case study of how the brands are evolving. If I was to ask you if you've ever been to a Fairmont, many of you would probably put your hand up. Uh, if I would ask you what you think about Fairmont, you'd probably say, oh yes, those are Canada's castles. But in fact, what we've been through, particularly at the Royal York, which is the biggest castle, uh, is this transformation of trying to figure out who we are. Because it's okay if you're this luxury historic brand that you associate with a particular demographic, typically somebody who's over 50 and wealthy. Uh, but that's great. But what happens when those people stop traveling? What do you do about all those other oncoming generations and how do you stay relevant? So this is a little bit of a story about how the Royal York has decided to stay relevant. So five years ago, the hotel was purchased by a new owner. It's a Canadian owner, which is great. Uh, they're local in Toronto, and they're very passionate about philanthropy, and they're passionate about the Royal York. Everywhere I go in the world, literally, and I have been around the world, whenever I say, oh, I'm from Toronto, they're like, oh, that's cool. What do you do? The question that you were supposed to ask, Mary, from that function that you didn't go to that's called how not to network, this is one of the questions you're supposed to ask. So what do you do? or not ask, I don't know if that, how that works, but anyway, I did go to the session, I promise. Uh, what do you do? I work for Fairmont. Oh, great, what, doing what? Oh, I'm at the Royal York. They're like, the Royal York? My grandparents met at the Imperial Room. My mother worked there 20 years ago. I have a chair that we stole from there in 1975. <laughs> I'm like, don't bother bringing it back, you're good. But they all have a story. And, and today, marketing and branding is about storytelling. And I think what's really great today for the students who went to many of these sessions is that there was lots of dialogue about your brand. Because one of the things that you will learn as you move out into the workforce is everything you do, the way you present and deport yourself, whether in a social or networking environment, online, your LinkedIn profile or your Instagram, is your brand. And the reason that's important is because people will make decisions about whether or not they're going to hire you, about whether or not you're going to be promoted, about whether or not they can see you in a particular role based on the brand that you present. Branding is super important today, so let's keep that in mind. Uh, the brand of the Royal York really is about creating an essential Toronto experience. The vision of the owners is anywhere in the world, it's like, ah, I'm going to Toronto, what should I do? Well, you should definitely go to a Raptors game. They won the other night, it's pretty good. Any Raptors fans in the room? Yeah, yeah, go Raps. Leafs. Uh, okay, I know, it's tough. It was a tough year. We'll get there. Uh, but the idea is that if you go to Toronto, you should do something like climb the CN Tower, go see a Leafs game, and go to the Fairmont Royal York. That, that is the sort of sphere in which this brand lives. And so we've been working very hard to figure that out. And here's what we've been up to.
so that's my part-time job. <laughs> For those of you in the hospitality business that are just starting out, that's what four years and $400 million looks like. Uh, and the reason I have all this gray hair. Uh, but really, I truly have the most amazing job in the country right now. This hotel getting reborn, this idea of transforming something uh, is really what marketers live for. Uh, and this idea of how you create that sort of branding and transform from you know, words that we would have heard maybe five years ago about Fairmont, which would be, you know, oh, historic, luxurious, expensive, to this idea of timeless and tasteful and cultured. We get it. This isn't a brand demographic for every single part of the market. We're not trying to be the 20-year-old to 80-year-old travel destination, although that is our customer today. Uh, seeing you know, the lobby, the new lobby bar called Clockwork, as I left last night, literally there were like 200 people hanging from the chandeliers, and they were from like 20 to 80, uh, which is great, because we want to be uh, appealing to all people. But creating the essential Toronto experience is really what that brand is all about. But branding, to go back to the idea of why future brands are important, really, for us at Fairmont, it's all about our people. We knew through the beginning of this process that we were going to spend a lot of money making the building look better. Right, you saw, the, you saw the time lapse. I will apologize to Connie Selica for tearing out her spiral staircase that she used to climb up and down all the time. Uh, but we needed to, and we made it better. But really, it is the people, and we knew that we needed to sort of polar, like bring together the colleague nation, as we call it. Uh, and we created this internal branding. Long before we created the branding of the new spaces in the hotel, and long before we really embarked down this idea of creating an essential Toronto experience, we created We Are Fairmont Royal York or what we call internally as WAFRI, uh, which just means nothing, right? We, but what it was, it was this idea that everybody in this building had a great amount of pride. And I don't know if you've been to a Fairmont recently, but if you look around, often the colleagues have worked there a very long time. And what I learned when I came to the hotel six years ago, and I thought I knew the hotel, was that I didn't actually know it at all. Because what I was unprepared for was this deep level of commitment and pride that the people who worked there had for what they did. Now, remember, six years ago, this was like a, a very poorly performing, under-renovated, capital-starved hotel that, the, that an institutional owner had just had been unable to move forward. But yet, these people standing on threadbare carpets and duct tape holding seams together were inordinately proud. And I really wanted to tap into that as a team. And so we created this colleague branding, and it really drove engagement and loyalty, which was incredibly important through the transformation, because you can't rip a hotel apart. And we literally, the, the time lapse doesn't really do it justice. That was 360. 65 days of pile driving in the middle of an operating hotel uh, and closing lots of venues and spaces, which meant people had to go on layoff, not get hours, work in different parts of the hotel that they didn't necessarily want to. Uh, and it was, it was a challenge for them. And we knew that if we didn't embrace the team and if we didn't do this as a collective family, that it would fall apart and we would never recover from it. And I'm, I'm really happy to say that the team did an amazing job of holding that together. One of the big things that held that together was this idea of being a hardest. This isn't a core global philosophy. We have 280,000 hardists around the world who really use this idea, which is not foreign to anybody in this room who's an East Coast origin, uh, you know, this idea of, of taking care of people and welcoming and, and exuding the spirit of hospitality. Uh, but globally, we needed to do that. And, and we created this hardest program that uses uh, uh, the idea of using your heart and being a creative artist to personalize every situation to be able to do that. And so starting to bring this colleague journey internally to life, and I would say to any of you in the room that are going into an environment where you want to give of yourself as a hospitality professional, align yourself with a brand that you feel passionate about. Because if you don't get up and go to work every day and go, I can't wait to be there, uh, it's going to be really hard. Right, Because it is a demanding job. We've chosen an industry that requires us to work long hours, it, often at times when everybody else is relaxing or wanting to be uh, in an enjoyable environment. We're the ones that are working, creating food, and thank you to the culinary and service team that have taken care of us here tonight. Uh, but th that's, that's the job we chose. So if you don't love it, it's going to be really hard to fake it. Uh, and so not faking it would be a big piece of the puzzle. And so we work really hard to make sure we don't have to fake it because we actually choose the right people and then we encourage and celebrate and recognize them uh, for the hard work that they do. Any of you could, would know that communication is a big piece of the puzzle, right? But here's, here's, here's the conundrum. 10 years ago, everybody in a hotel was pretty much the same age. If I look around this room, our swim lane of age demographic is a little wider, right? Everybody in this room likes to be communicated to in a different way. Hands up if you'd like to get a flyer pushed under your door tonight to tell you about what you're doing tomorrow. Well, a few people, right? You have blue energy. You like to be organized. I like that. 
Uh, but we have people who've worked at the Fairmont Royal York for longer than I've been alive, which is a long time, uh, and they don't necessarily jump onto their iPhone and want their agenda electronically or their schedule. But I also have people who are 18 years old who are like, uh, yeah, I'm not coming in to like look at the bulletin board and read a schedule. You need to email that or t <laughs> you need to WhatsApp that to me like today. And I'm like, what's who? Okay, we can do that. So we had to figure out lots of different communication styles. And so we've been really migrating ourselves online. Uh, the team was teasing me earlier. Uh, I actually don't use paper anymore. I literally, my life is in my phone. If I don't, if I lose that phone, it's all over, I'm out. Uh, and that's okay, right? That's the way life is. But we have to think about what that broader communication style looks like. So we created a number of communication tools uh, and really work hard to celebrate and recognize all the people that work uh, in the hotel. And it really is a cycle. We believe at Fairmont that if we take care of our people, They'll take care of our guests, and the rest of the business will take care of itself. It's a really simple model. Uh, but it's not lip service. Uh, I would say to you, uh, having worked for the company now for over six years and worked for many other brands, uh, we really do start with our colleague journey. Because if it's not working for the colleagues, if we aren't taking care of them, if we're not creating experiences that feel like they're authentic and genuine and connect them to the vision and values that we have, then we know we're not gonna be able to execute the hundreds of thousands of transactions and the millions of dollars of revenue that we need to generate over the year. So really it's about putting the colleagues at the center of the experience. They'll drive, they'll be engaged, they'll drive a great experience for the guests and loyalty, revenue, all that stuff will take care. This was a really fun thing we did this year. We do this every year. We celebrate the colleagues that work in the hotel uh, for three through, yes, that is 40 years of service. If you can imagine working in the same hotel for 40 years, uh, and we have a lot of those people. Uh, over 3,000 years of service. The best thing I do every year is to host a, a, an anniversary luncheon and celebrate those folks, because uh, they really are the true heroes that bring the hotel to life every single day. And we ask them, how do we know they're happy? We ask them religiously. Every year annually, we do a colleague engagement survey. The hotel uh, sits at a very high, high engagement level and has throughout the transformation, which is really our big measure of whether or not we've been successful and we have a super low uh, turnover. So less than 10% turnover at Fairmont Royal York. That tells me that we're doing something right. Uh, and those 10 are people who generally we're promoting into other areas, because of course with almost uh, 120 hotels around North America, people like to get promoted and go do new things, so we're happy to do that. Through the transformation, it was important that we measured colleague, ex uh, sorry, guest experience as well. So the colleagues are happy, check. Are the guests happy? Yes. We ripped the face off the hotel, we closed the lobby, we closed the restaurants, we jackhammered every single guest room in the hotel, we blew up the ballroom. We did it all for like four years in a row and the guest experience never wavered. In fact, we've been on a constant improvement uh, and of course there's always more work to do and I hope if any of you have been at the Fairmont Royal York, you've had a great experience, that is our goal. But this is about understanding too that in a brand environment you've got to measure something, right? It's all very well and good to say I like it, I feel, we think, don't think, get data. My marketing hat's gonna go on and the marketing professor is probably in the room somewhere, right? Don't rely on your gut, rely on the data. Believe what you believe, but then go prove it. Uh, we prove it by asking every single customer. We get over 50,000 reviews uh, annually. Our tool actually allows us to pull uh, every possible review that you can get anywhere on the uh, social media environment. But it really is these people uh, that make a difference. And we know that our customer, 90%, this is from the Luxury Insights Report, 90% of luxury travelers say that knowing that there's going to be an engaging person at the end of their journey influences their decision on where they're gonna stay, right? So if you need a statistic to tell you that people are important, there it is. We also encourage our teams to be able to go the extra mile. So this is just a snapshot of a platform we use. They're called Sparkle Moments. That's the internal lingo. But that isn't just like, go be nice to people. This is go do something interesting and personal and, and unique and then post it on the platform that gets observed globally within the company. So we were talking earlier about competition, right? Who would like to be the most Sparkle Moment hotel? Well, all of them around the world, uh, which is the way that you encourage this engaged behavior to make sure that the brand, the values, Engaged colleagues equals happy guests equals great business volume. So this is just a quick example of some of the fun things that the team do to, uh, to bring the hotel to life. So what about those pesky guests that get in our way? Yeah, they sure do. So 
every day, uh, live on my phone right now, I can tell you what the guests are saying at the Royal York. We use a platform called Trust You. We know that 93% of our customers tell us that they will use an online review of some sort, whatever your business is in the room, to decide on their purchase. And that's not just in our business, that's pretty much any business. Hands up if you go to Yelp before you book a, hotel, a restaurant reservation. No, you don't use Yelp here in Halifax? No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, how about you go to TripAdvisor before you book a hotel room? Ah, now we're getting there. Okay, literally, we know that the statistics tell us that online reviews impact, so this is no surprise to anybody in the room. We pay attention to it. But who do the consumers trust? Well, we also pulse check this with the brand equity, right? It's all one thing to say my hotel, the one person at the front desk, whatever it is, but your brand and everything we do, everything, students in the room, everything that you do, uh, I loved the story somebody told earlier in one of the sessions about somebody going through an interview for a flight attendant and getting far in the process and then realizing at the end that they didn't get the job because five years ago they posted a slaughtering uh, online rant about the company that they were trying to get a job with for losing their luggage, right? Okay, you got, they lost your luggage, you got mad, you went online, you got, had a moment. Uh, you affected your brand and you affected their brand and brand trust, let me tell you, in our world today has equity and it's something we pay a lot of attention to. So it's really good advice that we got earlier today. Go and do a sweep of your personal social media feed to make sure that uh, what's out there portrays your brand today. So how did we actually do it? Well, let's listen to the head of the Fairmont brand. Hotels are often seen as the heart of their communities. And while guests' needs and expectations evolve, hotels play a central role in a travel experience. The Fairmont Luxury Insights Report explores what connects locals and guests alike to a destination and the importance guests place on how hotels engage with their community. Today's luxury traveler wants immersive, personalized experiences that allow them to forge a deep connection with their destination. Travel is an opportunity for growth, and luxury travelers are looking for experiences that shift their perspective and have a lasting impact. Fairmont hotels are in a unique position to provide guests with immersive and transformative opportunities by connecting them to the essence of the community. Each one of our hotels is completely unique and reflective of the destination's distinctive spirit. And this comes to life in many different ways. It's in the nearby and on-site ingredients in our kitchens, the local artistry incorporated into a hotel's design and decor, and our warm and engaging staff who are at the very heart of any visit. Our colleagues enjoy a special familiarity with their locales, and through these special connections, they expertly guide our guests to fully experience the best that each destination has to offer. In the spring of 2018, we set out to conduct research on what motivates the luxury traveler. And that research revealed that a key component of their travel experience is knowing that they have a friendly and welcoming place to return to at the end of the day. And that's where Fairmont comes into play. Luxury hotels have become destination insiders and curators of experience. At Fairmont, providing locals and travelers alike with transformative and life-changing moments is what we do best. Merging the authenticity of a destination with a curated experience in a warm and genuine environment is what we believe creates the ultimate customer experience. So I encourage you to check out that study if you're interested in the luxury traveler. It's on Fairmont.com called Luxury Insights. There's reams of data, which is great. But really what it comes down to is this idea that people are seeking shareable moments. So doing something that's special and unique is a big part of what we do. It sounds easy when you say it fast, but across all of our Fairmont hotels, for us to actually curate these unique and uh, notable moments is something that we take very seriously and spend a lot of time working on. Uh, and is a great reason why uh, Fairmont Hotel is a great place to be. Of course, you all know this. Guest technology plays a big part of what we're doing today, connecting with guests in a different way than we did before. Having the ability to talk on a platform that makes sense to you is what we really make sure. If you want to go to the front desk, go to the front desk. If you'd like to chat with us on text, chat with us on text. If you want to email, email. It's all good. Uh, but then it's actually how do you translate that into getting it onto a social media feed because that is what builds your brand. So what's coming up in the future? Well. Toronto. <laughs> Great 
celebrating your essential Toronto moment. I think you're starting to see the theme. Uh, because it really is what we've been doing. But we've literally transformed every part of the hotel. And so, again, back to the connecting the dots. For those of you in the hospitality program, everything that you learn, every moment that you spend in class, all the stuff that your professors are telling you, translates itself into the job that we do on a daily basis in our business. Uh, I literally do have one of the best jobs in the country, and I'm so excited to go to work every single day in this amazing place, among some of the others that I am at. But really, this is the dream that you signed up for when you wanted to be a hospitality and tourism leader, right? Uh, and so this is just a way of saying it is actually out there, and we certainly hope that you uh, get a chance to do that. So what's coming next? Luxury, luxury, luxury. This is all about experiences, hotels at the heart of their community. Travelers are telling us that it is the very definition that's changing. It's not about nice thread count and nice shampoo in the room. It's actually about these experiential moments. Trust me when I tell you, I lose a lot of sleep at night trying to figure out how to get 1,284 people in one hotel to connect personally with every guest that they interact with on a daily basis and create an experience that is above and beyond the brand standard. But that's the mission. When our brand promise is to turn moments into memories, gosh, we darn well better. Uh, and that is what it is, right? A brand is a promise that you make to your customer, and ours happens to be that we're going to take those moments and we're going to make them memorable for you. Uh, luxury travelers know that it is important to have experiences that are not accessible to everyone as well. That's, this puts us in a different place. This isn't a consistent bed and a hot shower and a warm breakfast across the world. Uh, this is something very specific to our brand. Uh, and it's, an, it's a great experience and it's a lot of work, um, but it is like, it's exactly what our customers want. Those of you in the room who are millennials will understand this as well. We recognize that perhaps our customer is not millennial today, but you are our customer of tomorrow. You also have great influence on what our travelers do, because even if you are not a millennial, I'm going to guess that you pay attention to what the millennials like before you make your decisions. I know I do. <laughs> One in four consumers use social media. So I asked you about TripAdvisor. How many of you actually are influenced by what you see on your Facebook or Insta feed in terms of what you buy, right? Would you buy something that somebody that hasn't referenced on Insta? Probably not. So we work very hard to make sure that we create that content so that our customers understand what's happening. And we also know that our, um, our customer expects us to do it not only when they're on their own time, but also now when they're doing it for business. Anybody heard of the term bleisure? Business and leisure put together is called bleisure. Means I go to a conference and then I stay for an extra few days on my own dime because I'm already there and because really I'm working all the time anyway. So it's business and leisure mixed together. There will be no leisure in the future. Uh, it's just going to be basically you're connected all the time and you're having experiences that are experiences in your life. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet, but that's where we're going, guys. Uh, and we're going to be there to make sure that they have a great experience along the way. Uh, we talked earlier at our table about sustainability. This is something that I think is incredibly important, not just because it's important to our brand, but because it's important to me personally as a human being. Uh, we actually spend a lot of time making sure that our sustainability platform is in place. The Fairmont Royal York was the first place in, in uh, the first hotel in the world to actually put uh, beehives on the roof. We have over 600,000 bees uh, and a pollinator bee hotel. Uh, fun fact, 87% of the food chain uh, is affected by the pollinator bee. If the pollinator bees goes away, we're dead. Uh, so don't kill bees, because <laughs> I like to eat. Uh, but we actually have a pollinator bee hotel on the roof as well as the, uh, the queens that create the hive. We also have a sustainable organic garden. Uh, so although we can't fuel the entire hotel from the roof, we actually uh, plant uh, food and, uh, on the roof that we use. Think about this moment, right? You're a bride and groom. The chef has prepared a special pesto sauce for one of your courses. And you and your groom or bride get to go to the roof and cut that basil, bring it down to the kitchen and have the staff actually create that pesto sauce and then go into the room, the ballroom where your event's happening and tell all of your loved ones that you personally handpicked the pesto sauce that you're serving. Oh, those moments make me so happy, especially when they're on Insta. It's amazing. <laughs> we use Planet 21 uh, as our partner at Accor to measure our uh, sustainability efforts. And I'm happy to say that the Fairmont Royal York happens to be the highest possible achievement level at the platinum level, and we've got lots more work to do. Uh, so we, uh, we definitely take that seriously. Recently, and this is how we actually take branding and sustainability. So I love sustainability, we love branding, and we're also in Toronto, and the film festival is a big deal. This year, we actually partnered with the United Nations and their hashtag ActNow campaign. 
uh, all of these photos were actually taken at the Royal York by a famous photographer and then uh, sent, used to sort of uh, spread this idea of how can we impact climate change. And the reality is you have to act now. You have to do something. Turn your lights off, don't spread, don't, don't run water, do whatever it is. If, yeah, I know the guy on the right, whatever. Uh, they talked me into it. So imagine in 1929 what Toronto looked like. So that's actually, I love looking at these historic photos and think about the place that I work. So uh, that's what Toronto looked like back then. But here's my last sort of final thoughts for you. Today, it really is about connecting personally with your guest and with whatever your brand is. I heard a question from a student earlier to one of the uh, panelists to say, how do, I, how do I build my brand? The reality is you have to connect personally and you have to work hard at it. Uh, every brand, no matter how big you are, that's what you need to do. We believe that our guests choose us because of our connection with our communities. Uh, we believe that being authentically local, we believe that making sure that we take care of the communities in which we live is important and it helps fuel our sustainable positioning. And we also know that the future of luxury hospitality lives with engaging personal experiences. I have to tell you that this today, that being able to participate in this conference has been a very personally uh, engaging experience for me, getting to talk with the students that I met, uh, getting to be back here on the campus at Mount St. Vincent University has been a treat. Uh, and it really does remind me that the future of our business is really all about the people in this room. Uh, and I just, I sat here many years ago uh, and wondered what my, what my career might look like, as I'm sure many of you do as well, right? The sacrifices you make, working two jobs, going to school, uh, learning, trying to figure out what your future looks like. Uh, if anything I can leave you with tonight is other than to say, uh, keep at it. Hospitality is an incredibly rewarding field. Uh, I have had the best moments, uh, maybe some of the worst, but uh, literally the best moments of my life have been as a result of being in the hospitality business, and that wouldn't have been possible if I didn't walk across the stage and get a degree of Bachelor in Hospitality and Tourism from Mount St. Vincent University. So thank you for that, and thank you for your time and attention tonight. It's been a real pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you.